Welcome back to the Mama's Den, the uh, Black Love Podcast original featuring four beautiful mamas. Well, really three plus me, who's also a mama. Oh my I God. Mean, this is about start. you guys. We are not, what? This is about what you. Is going, okay, we're going to have to work on you, Cody. We are not I'm starting here. this off. To, I'm here to what? just But help. you just said four Cody. beautiful mamas. Then you said three minus me as if you were I'm beautiful. Sick of this. Or I'm sick Okay, correction. <laughs> Let me be clear. I'm beautiful and I know that. Yes. Okay. 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 And I'm a mama of a whole bunch of boys. Right. And I know that. Okay. Fit limb but children. I'm here to poke and prod and ask you all questions. Okay. That's fine. But you are inclusive in the four beautiful mothers. Let's get that. This is a group, okay? You're not like the girl who comes in and out of death. Destiny's child. Like, you, a member. you know what? I'm done. <laughs> Goodbye. The podcast is over. All right. So these mamas, us, the mama's den, welcome. Okay. I am Cody. Who is you? I am Ashley Chia. I am Melanie Fiona. And I am Felicia Latour. Woo. And today we are talking about telling the truth as parents. Why or why not? I feel like we've had a lot of conversations and are kind of aligned on like, we just going to give them that truth. Brooks has asked me some things lately that I love telling him the truth, but sometimes I'm stumped. Like, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like I'm thinking, how does his four year old mind comprehend this? How do I best explain it to him? And then how do I like make it? I mean, it's, it's OK to be awkward, but like, how do I do this? Right. So I'll tell you my most recent one. So I got twin two year olds and I got really are you texting and typing? No, it wasn't my phone. That was her watch. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> this phone is out. I can look at my Wait, watch. You see how she told on me quick? She, 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 she threw me. She threw me under the bus. Somebody beeped. You know what? We're. You know what? You know what? I don't like the dissension that's happening in this episode. She gets a pass. It's her baby's. It's her baby's birthday. No, no, no. It was her watch that made she that sound though. Watch. I feel like that was like one of those things where a crime happens and the person who looks guilty, but it was the other person because her watch that's beeped fair. at the same that's time fair. that my open my phone. <laughs> that's fair. I'll take it. No, that was Sorry. Hilarious. No, it's okay. <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're going to reset like they do on Clubhouse. We're going to reset the room. Okay. Oh, fuck Clubhouse. Um, so we're, we're talking Gosh, about telling the truth. All right. So I have twin two-year-olds and I have a four-year-old. And I try to tell them the truth about everything. Brooks recently saw a box of tampons in my bathroom. <laughs> and he all know he's smart. He can read. Okay. So I can't, you can't lie about nothing really. But he's like, what is that? And I'm like, tampons. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, what's that? <laughs> And I'm like, uh, I literally just said, I don't really know how to explain it right now. Mm -hmm. And he was okay with that. Mm -hmm. So, Look and I, and I he? clocked it. He's four, four okay. but I clocked it as like, I need to ask somebody, how do you explain mm -hmm. that? I don't even, I, yeah. how far back do I go? Do I give him all of the menstrual cycle and uh, then explain what the tampon does? I don't know. I would. I'm, let me tell you well, a you, crazy story. Carry on. Ask you have me, daughters. Ashley. Well, so when I had Amira, I, she was the only child for seven years. One day we were in Macy's in the bathroom and I was on my cycle mm -hmm. and I used oh, yeah, to you take told her me with me mm -hmm. to the bathroom. We're in the stall and she goes, ew, oh my God, you're <laughs> bleeding. Like so loud. And I was like, um, yes, I am. She's like, well, we got to call a doctor. Like what's Aww. happening? So I had to explain to her and I just told her the truth. I said, she was around four or five. I was yeah. like, Amira, women, like when they get older, they have a period and they bleed out of their vagina mm -hmm. and you have to use a pad or mm -hmm. a tampon. And she was like, that's so disgusting. I never want to get older. But I just told her the truth. Because yeah. I feel like at the end of the day, it's it's a normal thing. Yes. You don't want it to be not normal. Like, But if you tell a child, they could go around to yeah. other kids. <laughs> like, are you going to so, bleed out of your vagina? So, <laughs> well, look, first off, remember, he's a boy. Right. So he had to take the lesson, I would say, about a year ago of, like, the difference between a penis oh, and a vagina. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which is That's hilarious because he spent a period asking me like well let me see your vagina right like <laughs> let me see it let me and see i'm it. like no no no, it's fine not right now like no and so then he went to school with all girls oh, during no. the during the um pandemic. pandemic and like all girls six girls and brooks um and daniel i forgot about daniel um but i had to tell his teacher i was like in case he asks to see someone's vagina. <laughs> That's just what he's doing right now. So right, just, it's okay to say no. Right. It's okay to it's say okay no. To say no. But I had to give her the heads up. But yeah. I say that to say like, there's that additional learning of like, okay, this doesn't really affect you at all in terms of periods. But like, first you learn about vagina. Mm -hmm. Then you learn about women. But like, I just wasn't sure how much to give yeah. him yeah. in that session. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> I, think, I think with Peace, and she's six now, but the same thing. She like saw me changing my tampon. Mm -hmm. She's like, what's that? And I'm like, it's blood. 
Like, <laughs> this, is what, this is what happens. What it looks like. Same, I think I explained it to her the same way. But my thing is, I want to educate her. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, that's important to yeah. me. Yeah. So. Um, but there are some times I'm like, I don't have an answer for you right now. Come, come back yeah. to me. But I always end up telling her the truth. Right. You know? That's when true. Cam, Cam actually saw tampons in my bathroom. He's five. Mm-hmm. He was probably like four at the time. And, you know, they like come in different colors based <laughs> off of like, you know, heavy, right. super, I've never used whatever. A Oh God. That's a different. I, that's a I didn't life. even know they came in different colors. Let me tell you Stadium. something. I just wish. I mean, but I was playing. I mean, you were a dancer. Yeah, you I never, never wore tampons. No, I wasn't allowed. My mom was a paramedic, and she used to get calls where people would get them stuck inside of them, and girls would get like toxic so- shock, shock syndrome. syndrome yeah. She never let us use them. She said that was like the number one call they would get. Girls really? getting yes, they would wow. lose a string, and they would have to go. And point, so she's just was so anti. I never used them. I just had to figure it out. Just pad, pad for, pads for life. So what happens when you're dancing? I would put on pads. Wow. Now they yeah. have, uh, you know, like cups. Period. I would underwear. Do- so, oh, yeah, and no, period. But I would double. So I would wear a pad, then I'll put a pair of like black underwear under over it and then put my leotard over it so you couldn't see it. Yeah, I know. Still, it's I mean, there's crazy. ways. There, I'm sure there's ways. Never. I, I just knew that as soon as I discovered a tampon, life was much <laughs> yeah. better for me. No, yeah. absolutely. Personally, and yeah. I remember in middle school getting like a whole bunch of pads and basically like lining my underwear as if it was like a diaper. Because <laughs> I was like, and my flow was so heavy yeah. when I was in middle school. Yeah. I was like, you're not about to catch me slipping. Right. <laughs> just uncomfortable. Yeah, oh, I should just put a diaper on. <laughs> no, I know they have thinner ones now, but I don't know any different. So I yeah. feel like if I did use a tampon, I probably would never use a pad ever again. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you see? I posted something on Instagram. I was like showing like my favorite things and I posted tampons and I'm like, and for y'all that don't wear tampons. I use the same ones. I'm like, for y'all that don't wear tampons, mind your business. I'm like, you know, I don't want to hear it. Don't do it. I'm like, I have to. Yeah. So Melanie, when Cam saw like all So he co- saw the different colors and I remember I, I had that same moment and I'm pretty real with Cam about things, but- I almost felt I did. I had a block, and he asked. He was like, "Is this candy, mommy?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's candy for." for I was like, "I was like for women," and he was like, candy. "He was like, he was like, but can I have one?" I said, "No, no. you can't." I said, "It's for grownups. It's for women." Yeah, and I because I panicked. Could you? Yeah. I didn't have the. I did not have the answer for him, and I was just kind of like diffuse, oh, diffuse, no. yeah. diffuse. Yeah, you yeah. know. Candy. But but I'm very real with him about many candy. things. You know, if he asks yeah. me straight up, and one of the things that. I'm very like um, mm-hmm. open with him about that he is very interested in, which is, and he always has been, is death. Mm. That, I want to talk Peace about that. You. I definitely want to talk about that. So first I want to ask you guys, were there any, com- well, let's just go there because I don't want to get too heavy. But my thing with Brooks is that I've had to try to explain to him Because he's gone from this place of being curious about it and being like a little sad about certain things Mm -hmm. like, oh, my grandfather's dead, you know, Mm -hmm. but then to this place of like very matter of fact. Yes. And then I have had to check myself because I might be sensitive. He's talking about my daddy, but that, you know, you have to be mindful that there are people who are going to have emotions Mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, he's four, but I'm like, you have to be thoughtful when you talk about that sometimes, especially when it's not your own family. Oh, because you're saying he will talk about definite, like, yeah, like they're dead. Yeah, yeah he'll, he, I, he'll say something <laughs> like, oh, oh that flower is dead, <laughs> like my granddad. Elevated. You know, and you're just like, uh, you know, it's crazy that you say down. that. I'm, I'm going to take that from you because Cameron is at that stage where he is very matter of fact about death. He understands the concept, but he's not extremely emotional about yeah. it. Although he is deeply emotional. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I have to remind him, you can't just walk around saying, like, he'll walk around saying, like, when people die, do they just go, Bleh. and I'm oh like, Cam. I'm like, you, I was like, Don't make and you know, and, and they, that he's, he's trying funny. to be funny. Oh, no. You know, he's trying to be it funny. funny. But I'm like, kind of. Like, kind but, of. No, but, but, uh, but the reminder of the sensitivity. And yeah, because yeah, I'm true. so accepting of however he expresses himself yeah, right. but I have to too remember that at five years old he could walk out to somebody else who's experiencing yeah. great sensitivity with death and be very matter of fact yeah. and I have to remind him that there is a level of thoughtfulness that has to happen and yeah. awareness because he is a very empathetic child mm-hmm. so I, f- I feel like I trust those cues for him right. but I also know he's five and right. so he might just right. be trying to get a laugh out of somebody but <laughs> very deep and it's crazy because and I'm this is just like my spiritual like belief system of how life and death really are all together, which is why I don't shy away from it. Mm -hmm. My husband, on the other hand, does not know how to handle these conversations with him. Mm -hmm. And so whenever he asks his dad certain things and I see his dad not know how to talk to him about it, I dive in because I'm very comfortable with it. And 
he is, he asks about people that he's never met in our family. Oh, he asks about my mom's mom mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And, oh, to her. and it's, it's really quite amazing how he talks about her because he's always been interested in how she died. He, I actually have a, a audio recording on my phone because of our conversation he asked me what cancer was and yeah. I had to go down the hole of him with Girl, that I did too it, it's it's a very it's it, you and and I remember I tried to say baby you don't need to be worried about what cancer is right now and he says please mommy I don't know how it works in the body please oh, wow. and when he says that to me I hear that as a teachable moment yeah, yeah. Right. so if I can just maintain a level Girl, of mindfulness like knows how cancer works right no now. <laughs> but but you know but on, but on a cellular yeah. level, like he hears this word cancer and he's, he's sitting there saying, well, what, what is this word right. that we keep hearing, right. you know? So I had to go down that hole, rabbit hole with him the other day, but he has these very thoughtful moments. Like we were sitting outside on the patio and he found these rose petals on the floor. He put them on the table and he said, look, mommy, this is a flower for Gaga's mommy who died. Oh. And I just, well, I, I personally believe in reincarnation mm-hmm. and I believe the children talk to angels mm-hmm. and that yeah. spirit, like spirits return. 100. I yeah. hugely believe in that. I feel with Amira, with Azara and Asia, they really ask me about death a lot right now. Mm-hmm. And Azara is just more like, well, what happens when people die? And she started doing this thing. <laughs> Like it was last year when she would get upset, she'd be like, oh, I just want everyone to die. And yeah. I had to start explaining mm-hmm. to her how mm-hmm. powerful that is. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't say yeah. that. And then she felt really sad because I'm like, well, mommy's sister died. I can, I said, when people die, you can never see them again. Yeah. You can only talk to them in your prayers. You might feel their energy, but you can never, I was, you like being with us. You like holding us mm-hmm. and sitting, I, that can never happen again. So when she understood that, now she's more sensitive about it. Mm-hmm. But with Amira, she's, like Cam, she's a Pisces. She's a feeler. She's yeah. always been that way, like deep in her feelings. Even as a baby, she used to come up to me and tell me the weirdest shit. Like, um, I saw Auntie Rebecca today. This is before she was old enough to, that I didn't even talk to her about it. She'd be mm-hmm. like two or three and she would come up to me and say, oh, your sister misses you. And I would be like, wow. I believe it. Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks girl. Wow. <laughs> Going back over I here, Potter guys. <laughs> I believe but it. But no, but she's always been deeply, deeply in tune. She's a very empathetic child. Yeah. She yeah. feels everything deeply. That's also why I'm honest with her about yeah. every single thing because she has high emotional intelligence. Yes. Like it's same. very high. Same with yeah. Cam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I th- and I think you you do your children a disservice by not honoring yes. their level of awareness and intelligence yeah. because mm-hmm. they have it. And I feel like if we give them the opportunity to think for themselves and to understand. And then of course there's a, Mm -hmm. there's also this um, gray area where things that you believe Mm. you then pass down onto your children. Like when Cam asks me, I tell him that although a body gets buried in the ground, Mm -hmm. I even told him about cremation the other day. Mm -hmm. And, Mm. but I told him that I believe, I said, mommy personally believes that a soul lives forever. And we talked about the movie soul, Mm -hmm. you know, which, which was a really amazing example. I think for children to understand this life beyond the great, beyond the great before, which yeah, Yeah. tangible. And, and I think that I told him, I said, you know, I believe that when, a body dies, the soul lives forever, mm-hmm. and it's in the stars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can you can talk to the spirit and the yeah. soul yeah. anytime you want, you know. And I think that he understands that, and he kind of has like this reverence for it. Yeah. And and you know, just it, it it's hard, but I think your kids come to you when they're ready. Yes. And they ask, and they let you know I'm interested yeah. in this. So. I think so that speaks to the why. I want to know like why each of you have decided like to take this approach with your kids. Like, have your were your parents very honest with you? Like, for me, a big part of it, in addition to what you said, Melanie, is like I don't want him to learn somewhere else, mm-hmm. anything really. But you know, if I can if I can share something with him openly, I don't want him telling me like, oh, such and such said yeah. or taught me this. If I can be honest with him about right, it, yeah, it I think so. When it go into the death conversation, I, that's been very big in our family because uh, I think I was telling you guys in the last session that Peace's father lost people like mm-hmm. back to back. Yeah. It was like it was like one of his best friends, and then his dad, and his grandfather, and, his oh. gra- and they had like a very tight knit family. Mm-hmm. So Peace, um, when when I was pregnant, her, me and her grandfather were like super close, and so. 
I think he died when she was like around two or something. But I remember her waking up at like six in the morning because they had took him out of this like nursing home thing because we could tell like, okay, something's going to happen. But she woke up at six in the morning and she like was kind of telling me to go into the room. I think she was young, like wasn't talking like that. But we basically found him and we woke up before everybody else. But so so the way that we teach her is because she's so aware, Mm -hmm. so empathetic. The way and she's close to these people that all of a sudden are just like gone. And she was having a really hard time. She we would be in the back of the car and she would just like start crying. Aww. But like, what's wrong? She'd be like, I just really miss this person. Yes. Yes. So me and her dad kind of had to connect and be like, she's been through a lot at a very young age. She's seen and experienced a lot. Yeah. But we teach her the same thing that like the spirit goes on, the flesh is a thing that gets, you know basically goes away yeah. and you can talk to him like in the stars, in the trees. Mm-hmm. And we always see yeah. him like in the flowers and the plants. Everywhere. Yeah. But I remember there was a scary part and Gavin has t- told me this a couple times too, where a piece would be like, Oh man, I can't wait to go to heaven. We like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. yeah. We had to tell her like, that is not something that you just choose to do. I'm yeah. like, you know, it's a time yeah. you'll meet that person. But when she thinks about all the people that she, have passed, yeah. she's like, I want to go hang out with them. Kids. We're like, yeah. And at some point, baby, not right now. <laughs> so one time they were, uh, actually recently they went to Detroit and Gavin, he calls me like three o'clock in the morning and we're, we're just talking about peace. Like we just have like anxiety moments about the kids. I don't know if you guys experienced yes. that ever. And he was like, she told me something real weird. I'm like, okay, what'd she say? He was like, you know, she was saying she can't wait to, you know, go on the airplane and, and go to heaven. And I'm like, oh, but what she's trying to say is like being in the clouds, yes. Yes. Like, you know, Sky, yes. and he was just like, I don't understand why she said that. I'm like, well, she's sick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm like, and so he probably thinking the plane going to crash. <laughs> I'm like, it's going to be OK. But it's like that death thing is so big. And at yeah. first I remember just being like, oh, my God, do we like expose her to too much? Like, but how do you. But yeah. I also think yeah. it also makes her so much like she's like a grown woman. And you a kid have body. to discuss it. Children are are exposed to things in general. Yeah. You have to think like even when they watch Especially Disney now. movies. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Girl. Disney movies have death and despair. Like specifically all Soul. Them. Soul was yes. challenging. Well, no, to, for me, Soul was beautiful. You have to think at oh, least there was an movie. explanation Yeah, where yeah. a lot of times they're watching these things and it's like they're fighting or the child only has one parent. It's yeah. never discussed. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. it's clear like your kid's like, where's their mom? Oh, they died. Like in Tiana, her yeah. dad died. That's you know? true. That's so fair. it's like they wake up the next day singing a song and then the daddy did. Like yeah. there's no, so I feel like Yes, go. Can I just tell y'all, do you want to build a snowman is like hella sad to me. That it's is so sad. Because Elsa's like literally ignoring she's her depressed. sister after yeah, their parents baby died. Sad. She's, she's depressed. depressed. She's depressed for like 30, 20 years and then their parents she's like, die. And yes. I'm like, girl, go outside <laughs> and build a snowman. Every she, time I hear that she song, was in she's, a like, deep- she's like, Elsa? But I no, know. it's Did so you see sad. the second one when no, when didn't. the sister no, the second one they really go there <laughs> because me. when she thinks that the snowman died and her sister died and that song she's singing like this is a dark I'm in a dark place I may mm-hmm. never get out of this like they really mm-hmm. but the thing is there's no discussion. So yeah. your children yes. are taking these yes. things in, they're going to school listening to kids say stuff. That's why I think I'm the way I am because my mom was very open with me. She yeah. discussed same, same. everything. She talked to me about my period. She talked to me about sex, safe, like safety, yeah. health, everything. Mom so I am that, yeah, my mom was like, no, no one else is going to tell you. Yeah. It's not an option. So I'm very open with my children because mm-hmm. my mom was open with me. Mm-hmm. My mother, on the other hand, was not open. Oh, wow. Mm. Was very old fashioned, did not want to talk about anything head on with me. Death, on the other hand, was one of those things that she did. Because I did experience death at a young age. Mm -hmm. And I guess she, my mom also always says that she was always very comfortable with death, like as a young girl, very fascinated by it. And uh, I think when I experienced it at a young age, she was a great pillar of like strength and support Mm -hmm. and understanding explanation. But when it came to other things, there was no, I still have not had a conversation about sex with my mother. And I am, yeah, married. I mean, it, it was just interesting. Even well, it with, might be weird even now. With, well, at I this mean, point. I mean, this, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like, there's, there's never been that. And I think my parents, my mom specifically, was very, um, I don't want to force ripe you. Yeah. This is a Caribbean term, right? Force ripe means to force ripe a fruit. Like, mm. I don't want you to grow oh. too fast beyond your time. Sounds like Bridgerton. <laughs> I didn't tell I like them that. nothing. Force ripe. That's force cute. ripe, yeah. I, I, I get like it. That. I get, you know, and, and it, it, it was an interesting thing because even if I mm. talk about like tampons, I didn't learn about tampons from my mother. Yeah. Okay. My best friend put me onto tampons. Oh, wow. And when I and I was playing sports and it changed my life. Yeah. When my mother found out that I had tampons, she was pissed. Mind you, 
I was not having sex. Right. Yeah, it's just the idea of your but daughter in her sticking mi- something inside wow. herself. Her mind. She's trying to clog it up, mom. In her mind. <laughs> she had, she, her lack of education mm-hmm. and somebody taking the yeah. time to speak to her, her yeah. level of ignorance made her feel that only loose girls yeah. or sexually active mm-hmm. young women mm-hmm. could use tampons. Yeah. You know, right. the old saying that if your hymen was broken, that means you weren't a virgin. Oh, and mine broke up from ballet. Exactly. Child. Like yeah. all these things that were, com- you know, conversations that, did not have. Fortunately for me, I just, again, I think as a young child, I just had a very high emotional quotient as well. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't easily influenced by a lot of things outside. At that time, friend, my friends and my crew of friends, we were into sports. We were pretty innocent as far as what we were into or interested in. Yeah. So we weren't getting into too much trouble, thankfully for my parents. I also had a brother who was seven years older who kept my ass in check. Let's yeah. get that clear. <laughs> but, you know, my mom, she just never did. She never spoke to me. Right, I had because her parents probably didn't talk to her. They yeah, didn't. Right. But I mean, my mom was married at 19 and with a baby in oh, Guyana. Wow. So it's like I had to discover birth control on my own. I had to discover what sex was about on my own. I didn't tell but my mother when I lost my virginity. Though, what you just said, her being 19 with a baby, but then not teaching you. But understand <laughs> that her in her mind, that was it was the right order of life. Mm-hmm. I, I knew what I wanted. I was married and, okay. and in a okay. marriage. Was it an arranged marriage? No. Nope. Oh. Nope. And, you know, it was her feeling like her life was together. Yeah. Not recognizing I was living a very different life. Right. But again, fortunately, I did, I, I wasn't, my head didn't spin too fast and I yeah. didn't get caught up in a lot of things when they presented themselves to me. But I taught myself about everything along mm-hmm. the way. I found myself my OBGYN. I found myself, like, I mm-hmm. had to do all of that. And she just really, in a, in, a, in essence, lucked out that I was responsible yeah, in yeah, that yeah. regard to teach myself certain things. So obviously we're all, you know, doing our best to be honest with our kids. But is there anything that you lied to them about? <sighs> Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Really? Yeah. Girl. I, I lie about Santa Claus. I kind of avoid it, but oh, we... Oh, no. I, y'all I let y'all kids believe some white man come and bring them No, he, I, he doesn't necessarily need to believe that he's white. Uh-uh. <laughs> but he believes that there is... A, but like I, the idea but of it. The idea yeah, of the same. magic of Santa Claus. Girl. But I also don't give it all to Santa Claus. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, I let him know yes. a couple of these ca- presents came, but mommy and daddy Listen. spent their money yeah. and bought you these things. And, and I make him run the errands. <laughs> That's why I tell Peace. I'm like, he runs the errands for us. No. Damn it. When I tell you I was born, well, like that was not even an option. My mom was more on some, you will never believe that some white man came and brought, like, okay. no, that's not, no, it's mm-hmm. not happening. Yeah. So she is crazy because Christmas is my favorite holiday. It didn't ruin it for me at all. I mm-hmm. literally will watch the, like, when Hallmark has the 30 days of Christmas, mm-hmm. me and Amira, every night we're watching a Hallmark movie, and she is always like, you are the most Muslim, confused, <laughs> Christian person I've ever met. But I'm like, I love Christmas because I can appreciate it for mm-hmm. what it is. Yeah. It's just the memories and the thoughts. My mom used to get us a Christmas tree. We would do Ramadan. Then we would do Christmas. But she was just like, I got you these presents because I love you yeah. and we're celebrating the holiday and yeah. it's beautiful. And also I think she put an onus on us. Like, listen, I work hard and if you want something, then you need to be good and you need to behave. I think for her was more about, and it's no, it's not a shade to either of you because I'm telling you something that I do that my mom cusses me out about that elf on the shelf. However, for her, she was, she was a single mom and she was so into us understanding and respecting her. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was never like, I'm not giving it to anyone else. You're going to be good because I said you're going to be good. Not mm-hmm. because you think you're going to get a present mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. But I do understand the thought of that because all my friends were doing Elf on the Shelf. Then I just felt like my kids were left out. So I started getting it. And then last year I realized I kept putting it places. And then when Azara would act up, I would be like, the elf is going to tell Santa. And then Santa's not going to tell me. So she knows that I get them, but I still am like, allowing her to believe in Santa a yeah. little way. So your kids because still believe, they, they, they so don't this really like, believe in Santa, they, but they believe in the elf. It's weird. It's like Santa is obsolete to them. Like the elf matters and somehow it gets back to my mom. So my question is, is how do you navigate? Because <laughs> so my, my brother is right also a very, he's a realist. He has three daughters. Okay. His kids do not believe in anything. He's, he's also an atheist. Okay. So his kids don't believe in other supernatural things. Anyways. Oh, okay. But, I always was like, if you tell your kids Santa don't exist and they get around other kids, oh, yeah. could they like 
Yes. Break other kids' they, hearts. Yes, they will. Because Amira, they cause Amira did. Them. She used to go to tell other kids, that is not real. Your parents got those. Oh, those oh kids. my God. See, for me, then I, had to tell her, I didn't tell, I didn't implant the, the notion of Cam- Santa in Cameron's head. He just started He's, believing it. He saw yeah. movies yeah. and he saw things. Yeah, and I was like, can I cool. bust this but, bubble for him? No, but there's a lesson in that. Because what I, the lesson that I taught Amira is I said, everyone doesn't believe the same thing. Mm. Some people have yeah. different beliefs. So you have to be respectful and mindful just because you don't believe in Santa, someone else can so you don't go up to them and tell them that he's not real that's not your place so even though I still was able to teach her a lesson about respecting other people's beliefs I mean that's that's true to a lot of things in life yes yeah. exactly Religion, it's not just about saying, whatever it's it about is you yeah, being mindful true. and not going up to people like telling them what to believe in. yeah that's yeah. not so cool I feel like I'm like your mom too Really? Same, yeah, like very much like I, I literally tell Peace that Santa runs the errands for us. <laughs> I love I'm that. I'm like, because that I is, still I want her that. to believe in the yeah, idea, the but it. it's the same thing. I'm yeah, like, yeah. and my mom told us real. I remember I was, my heart was broken when my mom was like, Santa Claus not real. <laughs> and she's a single mom. And by the time she had my sister, she stressed <laughs> yeah, out, you know? Same, so see? she just like, yeah, no, like you getting this stocking yeah, stuffer. I'm like, <laughs> damn, yeah. you just see, came around. That's around. how my mom was. I think it might've yeah. been the single mom thing. Like I think we have the luxury of yeah. giving our children a dreamy world when yes. you have a single parent that's working hard, they don't always have time to create illusions. It's like life is real. Yeah. 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 And I think peace is very big on, like, she just loves holidays and celebrating. She like, I don't care if it's real mom, just do it. Yeah. Yeah. She does, and, I'm, and I'm the same, but I love it because I'm like, you're the perfect kid yeah. because I feel the same way. I'm like, I don't care if he's real or not. Just get the tree. Yes. Okay. So get wait. the present. Yes. So and the hot chocolate. <laughs> how far does it go? Because you two have older kids, Felicia and Ash. Mm-hmm. Yes. With, the tooth fairy. Oh, oh we she, never did the tooth sis fairy. Sis pulled up with twenty dollars the yeah. other day, <laughs> and I wrote, "I'm, it's me, it's yes, me." That's what I told her. I said, "Put your well, tooth wait, under there, and with I'll the put note. money so under there." Does she believe in the tooth fairy or not? She does believe in the tooth fairy, oh, but she, she doesn't just know it's like you. she doesn't know that it's me. No, okay. and I'm gonna eventually tell her. But I'm like, we all. My thing with pieces, we all work together. Like it's not an outside person, you know. Well, and she oh, and she's I just like, you. okay, I like Do that a lot. Do not feel like it's more damaging to tell your children these lies and then have to break their heart. Wouldn't it be better to just tell them the truth from the beginning? Girl, them friends about to break the heart. I was just about to say, friends about to break the heart at the school. I'm like, I got my heart broken. Am I? Can't they just enjoy these things for what they are? Like, yeah. in, instead of creating this illusion that now you have to like take I don't from create them. the illusions. I don't even know what oh, to tell you. No. Who I Brooks, love creating Brooks, illusions, baby. We That's literally my problem. never... We literally never, yeah, 100%. He's always like, can you just buy this? Can you just, you know, he, we never <laughs> told never him thing. that Santa did or didn't exist. Yeah. He learned about Santa at school. Right. Like he would oh. see Santa around. And now when he asks, like, well, who is Santa? Like, what does he do? I'm about to use what Felicia said. Yeah, he remembers okay. okay. for me around Christmas time. You know what I'm okay. saying? Mm-hmm. We, I, but I, give I him the money. will go the <laughs> route of like, play. well, some this people believe money. he does this, right? Oh, That's kind of okay. how I'll do it. And he, he, I think. Can under he can appreciate characters, yes, okay. books and movies. Oh, and like stuff Marvel like that. comics. And he stuff. can yeah. you know what? That. Okay, so this is this is when I had to learn to switch the the story. So when Peace was first born, well, okay, when she's first born, like her first three Christmases, I would have Gavin dress up in like Santa Claus outfit, oh, right? Oh, I remember that. Yeah, it was so okay. cute. I but saw that. the saddest thing happened is oh. because, and I didn't realize I was doing it, and, and I felt like so guilty. So we stopped doing it because... When it was time for her to open presents, Santa Claus, a.k.a. her dad, is dressed inside of this outfit. Oh, so when she's opening the presents, dad. every time she's oh, like, no. mommy, where my dad is not here. And I looked at Gavin oh. and I was like, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. I was like, do you do you see what we're what we're I'm creating? Yeah, like, you know, right. I was like, so she's believing in this idea of Santa Claus because she would always be like, well, my daddy, he sounds and he looks like Santa Claus underneath there. And I was like, oh, hell no. So he stopped doing it. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, no, we're not doing this wow. shit no more. See, kids are I'm smart. Like, no. That's what I'm telling you. You don't got to do that. They'll still enjoy the... Magic no, they of the do. Yeah, I not, love Christmas, and I never believed in Santa a day in my life. So, I don't use Santa as leverage for him, but because he's aware of this show. idea, yeah. again, we don't. I don't break his heart for it, but I also don't promote it. Like I don't use Santa as well. If you don't do that, right, Santa's okay. not. Yeah, gonna, that's exactly that's good. why I don't do mm-hmm. it either. He's aware okay. that mommy and daddy buy presents. So, <laughs> so we're talking truth and lies, right? We're or truth and a lot of truth because that's what we're giving. <laughs> um, have your kids ever? Oh, dot 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 or. Um, what would you say if your kids caught you having sex? Oh, that's not. Let's talk about the truth, guys. I feel like this has happened to Ashley. It, no. What? You know, no. How? Never. And it never will. That, what do you mean it never oh, will? God, because yeah. I, I am like, I, that's never happened to me because my mom 
and dad weren't together. Mm -hmm. But I, that is one of my biggest fears. I Girl. feel like it is so traumatic. I am. It's never happened. The weird thing, though, is someone asked me the other day. They were like, what do you do when you have a newborn and you want to have sex? I said, you have sex. They're like, with them in the room? I'm like. They, 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 they don't know what's baby. going on. Wait, you, like, wait, you say they are dumb? No, I said they're a baby. Like, <laughs> what you say, girl, they are dumb. No, I'm like, like, <laughs> but I'm like, that's dumb to ask me because I'm like, wait, a newborn? You think yeah. they're going to turn around? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Well, some, people think, some people think you might scar no, them let, or whatever. Well, let's let be clear. Me, but let me tell the you, The newborn is they, knows what sex is before y'all even know what it is. The newborn's like, this is how I got here. Right, and you was humping when I was in here, too. Right, Trying to get me out. Why, Why? but I see it was a baby. Yeah. I see it was a baby and she was like six months and me and Chia were having sex and she just woke up in the middle of the night and was over the crib and just started laughing <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> and oh, I was man. like Chia is she laughing at your like what you doing <laughs> oh, oh man I'm gonna have to put she up a screen literally Bro. dying laughing but it's never happened because Chia and I are like sneak sneak sexers yeah <laughs> like we will go and i'm this is what we always do i feel like amira is not dumb and she's starting to catch on mm. i'm like me and daddy have to talk about something don't none of you come in the room and we'll lock the door and then we'll go in the bathroom and then we'll do it real quick and or normally we do it at night when they're asleep and yeah. they're not gonna wake up we lock the door because we have the camera to see in the room yeah so we keep that on if we hear a any Russell Tesla, we're yeah. like that ah, gotta look make yeah. sure they're asleep but it's not happened I, I don't think it'll happen at this point it could possibly happen when they're older mm -hmm. but I still feel like I'm just I keep my ear to the street yeah so, I'm okay. the same way I'm yeah. the same way you feel like it won't happen because I have a whole answer yeah no I want to know you guys no yeah oh. no but I but I had a very vivid like what if he came in right now what would I say like I yeah. had oh. that moment what would you say I would, what would you I would, say I would tell him the truth I mean <laughs> Oh, no. I mean, but I like, would. How like, much of a truth? Right, you, like daddy's penetration. Yeah, daddy's penis is in mommy's okay, vagina so right I now. I didn't like map out the words, but. Well, this is my regular I penetration from your YG father. Song, beat the, but, uh, 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 <laughs> daddy is. Uh, <laughs> daddy beating it up right now. Come back later. Oh <laughs> He's really smart. He he knows where babies come from, yeah. right? Like, okay. He knows about sperm and he knows about um, um, eggs. Eggs, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. And uterus. Like, we have a but wonderful book. do you think he really conceptualize it. Nobody asks, right? Okay. He, so, so at first he just enjoyed the book and he was like, right. cool, you need a uterus, you need a sperm, you need an egg. Because this is a, the kind of book that like is very clear that anybody okay. can have a baby with those things. Okay. Right. You know? oh. and, right. It's like not that. gender specific. Okay. Right? That's smart. And so, and I love, I love the book too. So at first he just like really appreciated the book and then he started so being the like, the book, yeah, then he the started book? being like, so, but how do they, oh, it's called What Makes a Baby. Perfect. And I'm the way, the one Amazon. sketchy thing is right. they describe no, is that great. the sperm and the egg meet and they do a dance and they tell oh, each other stories until they until their stories and their dance become one and okay, that's okay. the that is the, a the lovely fetus. very nice um, or the embryo it actually says embryo it's a great book but eventually he was like so how, how do they do, how do how they, do they come together right yeah. so so for me that moment that i had of like if he walked in right now because it was just like where we were in the time and mm -hmm. you know i was like if he walked in right now what would i say and I really would, because of the book, I would just contextualize. Shut Tell up, me, Ashley. Like I don't I'm, like the way your eyes is because, can, I'm Brooks. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy, what are you doing? I really want to hear this explanation. I would be like, okay, you know, let's, we're going to do, this is a role play. This yes. is what's grab, happening. You grab the book and flip to the page. <laughs> right. doing this no, you're, come on, you're pumping, it's happening. <laughs> or do you you're just pumping. stand up and go through an anatomy <laughs> oh, lesson? We would, we would hear something. Like, we oh, would, okay. we would have to stop. But, what's but, okay, here we go. Right. That's his feet. His feet. He, he wouldn't be Would scared. Would you just tell me what's yeah, happening, I'm trying, Mom? But you're playing him all wrong. Okay. <laughs> She's like, hold on. He would not be scared. He would be curious. Hey, Mom, the boy what's is going on? Curious, <laughs> okay. He's gonna be like, "What's up, guys? Right? What are you doing?" <laughs> and of course, if it's like it obvious, could be scared depending different. on what position you're in. It could be weird. Sure, your but I'm, naked. I'm going back to this one oh, moment okay. in time. All okay, right. we're on the couch. That's all I'll say about that. Oh. Anyway, so I would say sex. Like we're having sex. Ooh. And he would be like, what is that? And I'll be like, well, you know the book, right? Where the sperm and the egg, they do the dance. That's, this is how it happens. So then okay. he's going to be like, yeah. y'all making a baby? Yeah. I would say, well, <laughs> maybe. I wouldn't explain vasectomy, oh. but I would be like, well, that's how it happened. And sometimes a baby happens and sometimes it doesn't. Oh. You know what? I don't like your face. I'm No, it's yeah, not. Uh, it's look, not I'm, judgmental. Again, I'm with Ashley. <laughs> I'm, the same. I I'm, I'm not judging you, just to be clear. I'm I know, just deeply... 
confused. Okay, Look, so I've, I've told well, my I don't mom have all the answers, Ashley. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've told my mom as an adult, and I can say this on here because now we can laugh about it because mm-hmm. I forced her to talk about uncomfortable things because I'm like, I'm grown now and I have two kids, mom. Right. Okay, I'm not a kid. But I have caught my mom having sex and oh, I was traumatized. Yeah. See, that's what yeah. I think. And I told her, I I and I remember to. being so upset with her and I was like, that's you were having up. sex with someone. And my mom is like a single mom. <laughs> right. I'm like, who is this man of my mom? Oh, why no. is she screaming? Like, I was oh, why is she so terrified? Why is she- so now, like I said, we can laugh about it. How old were you? Oh, God, I was... Oh, in fifth grade, so however you are, nine, eight, yeah. ten, enough for me to know ten. what's going on. Yeah. You know, I was devastated. I was so disgusted. Like See? I just, and it also yeah. wasn't explained to me, so uh, it was just too much. Did she know you caught her? I, no, I told her years later when oh. I was like pissed at her, and I was like, and just so you know, <laughs> and she was like, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, she didn't mean it, but so now that makes me very like, okay, if I am humping, yeah. uh, it's when they are asleep, the yeah. door is locked, like, yeah. put the, the door pillow is in faces. So I'm like try to like really keep that whole yeah. child. Yeah. The reality is, at some point, I will have to explain sex to him. Yes. Absolutely, that yes. was my thinking. Is like, well, damn, I gotta explain it to him at some point. Ooh. So it was like, if I have to explain it to him. At some point, he's gonna he might catch, and then we'll just be like, "Yes, that's what I that thing is." That yeah, I told yeah, you yeah. About. I hear yes. you. Though. For I the three you. of you, because you guys have boys, we do. So, how are you going to explain sex to them? Because at some point, they're gonna start, girl, already doing Sorry. things Sorry. to themselves my baby's to make themselves feel better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's my <laughs> biggest fear is like walking in on my son and he's like, girl. Penis I just because I do I think so I do like think that's how, natural. I will say for them. Things. It absolutely you know, but how say, do you handle that? Tell they daddy yeah, yeah, I, I, I told, I'm like, yeah I mean you gotta handle I'm not gonna say I don't know how to speak I told to that. Jared all the time. Oh, I'm like true. I'm like all those things that's you. You got it. You did it. You know what it is. Okay. What are you gonna do what about single moms I'm I'm here. I don't know. I don't know call an uncle I'm like I don't know husband husband out of town all the time. Oh right Hi, I'm here. Oh, no. So, um, FaceTime. It, oh, it's, God, it know, starts man. early. Okay? That's what I heard. And and I have the benefit of honestly something like how that early? you told me. Like 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 it's happening. So no, it starts. It's not starts. necessarily like a full. It's not, on, they're full not even conscious, oh my God. but they recognize that he there's a reaction. Under, yeah, and a they feel that. Yeah, they touch yes. it on accident. Oh, and they're like, oh, yeah. or even not, and oh just kind of being God. like, I'm, I'm, you know, because there's a lot of like, what are you doing? Like, are you okay? Do you need privacy? Yeah, right. And so he'll kind of be like. You know, well, it's moving. You yeah. know, so that. No, kind Cameron. Of thing. Oh, Cameron wow. has said my pee pee. He says my pee pee's big, and yes. I'm like, yeah. But like or, if, he, oh my if God. he has to go I'm pee, to push it down. yeah. Like, that's what I'm I'm tr- or he'll or like <laughs> yeah, if he so interesting. Record, and then he'll. Right there's now. certain things where like if he gets like <laughs> so, excited or nervous, he'll be like, oh, my pee pee feels excited, and I'll be like, this but is I, happening. Ah, oh my God, butterfly feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm doing right now is teaching him about like privacy and like where to do things, time and place. This I've mentioned this. I don't know. I feel like I talk about it all the time. Long before I ever had kids, I read this article called from Scary Mommy. We don't touch our vulvas at the table. Okay. And it was like this mom talking Sounds to her reasonable. daughter, talking about <laughs> right. It's reasonable. It, it's reasonable yeah. talking about how her three year old daughter was like touching herself, and she wanted to give her this um, clear understanding that like it's okay for you to touch mm-hmm. yourself. Just not at the dinner table. Right, right. Right. And so then it's like, well, where do we do this? Right. Right. So so for me, that stuck with me. I mean, I'm telling you, like 10 years ago, easily, maybe, maybe more, but that stuck with me. And I always wanted to be able to talk to my kids about I, I knew I wanted to prepare for that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what I'm doing now is like letting him know that like if you want to do that, cool. Like you just need privacy. I'm so yeah, glad yeah, yeah. I and have so daughters. you need to go to your for room sure. or your yeah. rest. I don't well, make it, mean, I don't make it don't touch her don't at the table. It's just the whole penis thing creeps me out. Like yeah. I don't know. It's so weird. I think I now know why I don't have sons. It makes complete sense to me. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah. because I have bro- brothers and I caught my brother humping a pillow once. And it, it You're traumatized, traumatized me. Yeah, it's She's a so lot. traumatized. It's yeah, just weird that. to it's watch just, I'm not on, ready. like... <laughs> but no. you told me a story, honestly, of a mutual <laughs> friend of ours who caught her oldest son... Um, like he would like lock the bathroom yeah, okay. door. Don't We're not going to say story. who. Well, I'm not going to say who it was. She might know who it is when she sees it. Okay. We don't know. Well, she, we, she uh-uh. has a very transparent mama. I'm not telling her, like what I'm okay. saying is you told me this yeah, story Yeah, she about told us that she caught that, but she, that. And she was like, and, and in them, my mind, she had her husband Oh, he, disgusting. Yeah, girl, my mom, son, mom yeah. be out of town sometimes. I had to tell him the other day. I was like, hey, so this is what's happening right now. Right. Well, she said she freaked out. She was uncomfortable and then she felt really bad. Yeah. And so she went back and talked to her husband about it. He Basically, gave her good he advice was in the bathroom her, doing his thing. Yes, and told her, like, you cannot make him feel bad about yeah, right, that. Right. Then he went back and spoke to him about 
like appropriate times, yeah. like you said, and pl- like the conversation you're having when it's appropriate and just making sure that you have privacy. Yeah. I, I vividly remember being like when I started feeling good and making myself feeling good and masturbating, I never discussed that with my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember my sister one time was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, what's happening right now? And Because you were doing it in front of her? No, I was, we had bug beds. <laughs> okay. So she was like, what are you moving? Like, you're, you know, when you're trying to like <laughs> move, you're young, you don't know, and it feels good. So I know that I will tell my daughters yeah. and talk to them about that. And I think it's important to know how to make yourself feel good before you're ever with someone else. Yeah. It's just scary because you do know that once you start feeling good, you become more and more curious. Yeah. And then the more conversations you have, even when you inform your children, that still sparks a form of curiosity. Yeah. Now they know a boy can make them feel good or another girl can make them feel good or whatever it is. So that's probably yeah. like my biggest fear. Is just, I, just, I don't I don't want my kids having sex. I just yeah, <laughs> no, I just don't think that that my approach will ever be to shame him for anything. Yeah, yeah. no. Like just, but sometimes we do it on accident. Yeah, yes. of course. Like, so like, I don't know how to respond. I feel like I hear the moment of mom and walking in on a 13 year old yeah. and I'm always preparing for that. Even yeah. when he's two, I'm you like, like, I'm right like, now what you're will looking I say? at little cam, but like when your son is taller than you and his voice is deep and you <laughs> listen, might, you're not going to shame him, but you might be creeped out. Like that's I, my baby. Yeah. I will probably be creeped out, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to hold my shit together yeah. and I'm going to let it, because what I never want is what I felt growing up which is that my child is embarrassed or doesn't feel comfortable to come and speak to me because that is the worst the worst like I don't I want and because right now we have such an open dialogue about so many things Mm -hmm. like using words like vagina and penis and these words that he's very comfortable about hearing. Although I think it's really funny because no matter how many times I've said their breasts and nipples, he for some reason calls them bristles, which is <laughs> which is my bristles fa- sprouts. which is my favorite like, thing. He was just like, "Oh, mommy, I laid on your bristles," and I was like, "Breasts," but <laughs> that's how I was the way to correct him. Bristles be- after I breastfed, it's like all in one. <laughs> right, bristles. He just, bristles. He just combines them, but you know, I think keeping those open dialogues, not making it awkward, yeah. not laughing, yeah, not not that's saying. True. Oh, wait for your father to get home. Just yeah. saying, yeah. you know what, honey? Yeah. We'll have a conversation when your father comes home and keeping it chill. Yes. Yeah. Because I think that it's our like generation tone. has so much more self-awareness. Yes. yes. And I don't think that we run from uncomfortable situations like the generation sometimes yeah. necessarily sure. before us did. They you know? weren't given the tools. They weren't. But we no. don't even have to worry about that because you're already start. Like you yeah. two already have that relationship. Something you would have to make a change. Meaning like, you would have to wake up one day like, I'm not going to be candid with my son. So because you already have, in, same with you and you, mm-hmm. you already have the basis of that relationship. It's just going to continue to be that way. Mm-hmm. That's how my mom was with me, which is why I always felt comfortable talking to her about anything. Mm-hmm. I actually felt so bad when I lost my virginity. I was 17 and I went to the doctor with her and the doctor was like, are you still a virgin? And I just was like... What a question for the doctor to ask. Well, um, he just... did. That wasn't appropriate for him to ask, but he was going to do a pap smear. Yeah. He was like, are you sexually active? And he was like, if you right. don't feel comfortable, if your mom in the room, she can leave. And she was like, well, if I have to leave, I already know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> she might like, right. You and I was 19 wrong. at the time. Oh, wow. So she was like, when did you lose your virginity? And I just started crying and I told her and she was like, it's okay, baby, but I need you to talk to me to make sure you're mm. safe. Like, I want to know what you're doing, what they're doing to you, making mm-hmm. sure that they're not doing something to you that you're not comfortable with. So she was really, she didn't make me feel ashamed yeah, at amazing. all. Yeah. No, it was a beautiful yeah. moment, but I felt so much guilt because she was so nice to me i feel like i betrayed her Aww. by doing something that she told me not uh-huh. to do yet yeah uh-huh. it was ooh, weird ooh, i feel i literally feel like your mom and you are me in peace really I'm like, i yeah, tell you that like all this. the time that you yeah. remind me of my totally. mom so much yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's weird it's so funny when i look like, at you oh, this is i'm like you are a big piece okay. yes i'm like okay this will be okay. yes it's she's, she's, fine. Okay, okay, she's fine she's okay. fine she like when i see the two of you together it makes me smile literally Aww. reminds me of my mom yeah oh i love it she's well ladies i have absolutely loved talking Talking about like this truthfulness Me with um, our children, and um, I don't know how to wrap this podcast up at all. Uh-huh. But uh, so I, I, we can play, it's over. We can the play end. re-record that. But the well, <laughs> this has been amazing. I cannot wait till our next session. I have some things planned for you all. Oh. Uh, for those listening, please follow this podcast, like this podcast, rate this podcast, The Mama's Den, and catch our next episode soon. Bye. Bye. See ya.